Hello, hello. How's everyone doing? Welcome, welcome to Frank and Cass and Goo. We're, uh, we're in for an interesting one tonight. I hope everyone is doing well and is in good mind states. Hey there, Mega! Uh, oh, there it is! Uh, ah. <laughs> Thank you very much for the two entire years, Frank! Ah. That's... that's so much. I've been doing this for two years? I've been... I've been an affiliate for two years? What? What? <laughs> Maybe I should have done something for an anniversary. Oh well. <laughs> but thank you very much. It really, it really means a lot. <sighs> um. So, or is there, that does not surprise me, Cass. But, but still, I do want everyone to take care of themselves. I guess before, um, before we get too deep into that, uh, I will say that um just normal housekeeping stuff we should be good for actually starting another new game on on and on sunday uh we should be good for um what's it what's it what's the what's it, what's it, what's it, checking my calendar yeah we should be good for wednesday with boss we should be good for next thursday either finishing this or trying something else um but the sunday after that so not next sunday but the 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 one after is um probably probably not going to be available definitely not going to be available but anyway we're we're good for you to we're good for we're good for we're good we're good for good, good good for this week um Cass has played this before uh yeah um I'm definitely going to run through it at least once um organically um and if I'm if if I'm going back and missing some some obvious things I uh I may ask for help then but I appreciate it um Cass also helped with some of the content warnings. So, uh, we are playing Milk Outside a Bag of Milk Outside a Bag of Milk, which is a, um, a, a sequel to Milk Inside a Bag of Milk Inside a Bag of Milk. Um, both of them were made pretty much by a single, single person team. So, um, yeah, the developer is Nikita Kryukov. Um, also does like some music, uh, retweets a lot of a lot of fan art of this game, but um, yeah. If you're interested in the vibes, you can find both of them on Steam. I think they're also in a bundle on Switch, but they are horror games. So we did we did play the um, the first game, Milk Inside. Um, We've, uh, we, we did play it a while ago on stream, um, and the general plot was that we, or the, 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 the player character was the literal voice inside the head of a girl, uh, with incredible, um, anxiety at the very least, uh, potentially some, like, deeper mental health issues that made, uh, going to, going to the store to get milk, uh, an absolutely horrifying experience, um, but but we did it we got the milk um so i don't know too much about the plot of this one i know that it is much more expansive like the like the the previous game i think we cleared it in about an hour and that was like with talking with chat and uh and voicing everything um but um we're definitely going to be expanding on some of the same themes in this one, and it's definitely a good bit longer. Um, so, with that in mind, we've, we've done it a couple of times, but we do have a content warning command. So, uh, if if you're not if you're not in a great space uh, or or anything on that list um, doesn't sit great with you, no worries. If you need to sit this one out. Totally understand. Um, also, hi there, Nikola. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing okay. 
I've, uh, I've, I've just been needing to lurk on your streams recently, but I hope you've been enjoying your, your Breath of the Wilds, and... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the question, Dilate. Is that, is, is Breath of the Wild, like, in, in preparation for Tears of the Kingdom, or, or do you just have some big feelings about, uh, about Lionel's? Bunch and <laughs> oh, you did finish it! Congratulations! <laughs> and yeah, yeah, I, I did, I did, I did see one particular tweet. <laughs> Good for you. Um, but uh, yeah, milk. That's a super weird, uh, <laughs> super weird segue from that, but, um, I guess that all being said, if we can go ahead and get started. Okay, do you, do you pronounce it Sidon? Sidon? I guess, I guess Sidon, like Poseidon would make sense, but, but like, I, I get it. Yeah, yeah, that checks out. Um, anyway, milk. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll properly get going before it gets too late. I'm walking to my room, trying not to look around. Playful shadows dance around me here and there. They dash all over the walls, the ceiling. One of those shadows whizzes past me, touching my face ever so slightly. I smile and continue walking, paying it no mind. Can lurk. Yeah, take care, Nicola. Thank you for stopping by. Sometimes it's so easy to lose self-control and track of time, spinning in a joyful dance. But I'm in a bit of a hurry here. Mom told me to go to bed. I walk past the kitchen on the way to my room. The door is shut, but I can still feel the chilling air coming from the other side. My first thought is that there's a living corpse blowing into the keyhole, laughing mockingly. <laughs> That's so silly. I'm absolutely sure we have no corpses in our kitchen. I know for sure that we've never had any corpses in our kitchen. I'm absolutely sure that- I break into a run and dash toward the closed door. Shadows intensify in their chaotic dance. Are they trying to stop me or calm me down? I don't know. It doesn't matter right now. Don't you get it? I weave my hands around as I run, trying to chase away my annoying pursuers, but then I suddenly realize that I won't be able to stop in time. I got no other choice but to break the door now. There's somebody inside. I'll surely scare them to death. But wait, how can I scare to death someone who's already dead? What if it actually revives them? No, 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 I don't want that. What do I do? I couldn't fully complete my thought when my shoulder hit the door and it flew open. As I expected, there was no living corpse inside, but there was a bag of milk I bought today, sitting right in the middle of the table, watching me with its unblinking eyes. I stare back. Nothing happens. Although, what exactly did I expect? Gratitude? Have I done something that warranted it? The bag of milk probably doesn't care whether it's on the shelf in a store or on the table in my mom's kitchen. On the other hand, nobody would drink milk inside the store, which means I took it from the safest place in the world and into the scary unknown. I'm so sorry, you poor thing. I turn away in shame and leave the room in a hurry. I only bring others trouble. I walk toward my room through a narrow corridor. Well, hi, friend. I meet a familiar formless creature at the door, it locks me in its clutches and starts sniffing a range of my body like a hungry dog. I'm not struggling. I know it's useless. 
I just stay silent and endure its tight grip that stops me from moving. After sniffing me from head to toe, the creature holds out its ugly paws, bearing a single claw, thin and sharp like a blade. Again? I stare questioningly into the monster's bottomless eye sockets. Don't move. The creature squeezes my hand until my veins start bulging, and I just keep staring into the black cavities where its eyes should be, ignoring all pain. I've promised so many times. Stay put. The moment it says that, its claw pierces my arm. I don't feel anything other than barely discernible crawling under my skin and a ring of tightly sprung sinews. But then, then the claw injects its venom into me. It hurts. A white veil appears in front of my eyes. My fingers cramp and start twitching frantically. I lose control over my body and slowly slide to the floor, just like last time. But why, why do I feel so hot? I feel my blood boiling up. Strong shivers run through my body, paralyzing every single cell while my veins and arteries heat up, almost bursting from the pressure. I try screaming, but instead of producing words, I vomit thick, milky foam. The creature notices it and throws itself at me in anger, grabbing me by the throat while keeping the poisonous claw on my arm. Kill me. Kill me! Hysterical streams resound throughout the corridor. In a fit of madness, the creature starts scratching my neck. Bright splashes fly everywhere, hitting the walls with a loud sound. I try to imprint where every drop fell in my memory so I could gather them all later. I need to remember. I need... A new wave of pain washes over me. Everything turns pitch black in an instant. Say it. I'll never drink milk ever again. I... Say it. I'll never drink milk ever again. Say it again. I'll never drink milk ever again. I'll never drink milk ever again. Holy shit. <laughs> Strong start. <sighs> How are we feeling? <laughs> I'm gonna take I'm gonna take one more sip of water, not milk. Oh, that was from the last game. Cool. Um, I guess I will say that for anyone who has played this before, I know that it's it's probably pretty pretty laden with with symbolism and uh, vague iconography. Um, I kind of want to try to puzzle out what I can. Um, so I will I will appreciate it if if we don't give away too much until I start asking for it. But I do appreciate. Uh, reminders of the last game since it has been a long time yeah yeah I, I it just brought it to mind Cass no worries thank you for reminding me genuinely this, this is not a call out <laughs> um but uh yeah yeah Whew. I finally get to my room I'm so tired of all this fuss Thankfully, I still feel comfy and warm in my room. Even the weird sounds coming from the outside don't make me anxious at all. Mom told me to go to bed, so I need to perform all the needed preparations. I've washed my face, and now I'm standing in front of the mirror with a toothbrush in my mouth. I look at my reflection. It shows absolutely no desire to sleep. Yeah, I get how you feel. And there was a time in the last minutes before I sleep for my favorite time of the day. I loved anticipating the inevitable moment when the reality and the dream world would clash. I woke up for that moment's sake, lived through the day for it. My biggest dream was to sleep all day long. It would have been so cool that the dreams always slowly but surely slipped away. 
I see somebody fish them out of my head, one after another, one after another, until nothing was left. And now I have to sleep again, even though I don't feel any need for it. After finishing with my face, I usually reach for my pills. It's funny, but I have no idea how they work separately, since I always swallow them, swallow them as a bunch without thinking. Now I want to have a better look at it, to troll it between my fingers, to chew on it. Do anything to stall for just a little bit more time. A smooth, protruded red capsule is looking at me. It's covered in a murky, semi-transparent film, but I can still discern its contents. So what do we have inside you? I gently press on the capsule from both sides, and to my surprise, it turns out to be soft and squishy. I press harder, and the capsule pops. Sticky, bright red liquid fills out. Pour, pours out. Filthy. Filthy. The pill flies straight into the waste bin, and I start rigorously washing my hands. No, there's no way I'm drinking that. Next, there was a flat pill of the same blood red color. There are some letters printed out on it. Oh, I get it. This is the medicine that makes me really sleepy. But it's not the type of sleep I want. That's not it at all. It's fake. No, no, no. I don't even want to look at it. The pill flies into the waste bin as well. The next half an hour goes by in similar fashion. I study every pill from all sides, and then I find a reason not to swallow it. I invent my own medicine instead, and enjoy swallowing them one after another, letting myself drown in their healing effects. Hey, my neck doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my hand doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my head doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my heart doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my stomach doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my eyes don't hurt anymore. How come I didn't think of this earlier? This is so simple. You need to brag about it to someone right away. But not to my mom. She'll just scold me. She's sure I'm already sleeping anyway. But I don't want to disturb with that reason. I'll think of something myself. Besides, I just really want some small talk. I wonder who's going to be my conversation partner. Uh... What what does purple sound like? Hey. Oh, oh is that's oh that's that's uh that's me. That's me. I am the one who says hey. Hey, long time no see! Um... Okay. Are there different save slots? Or, uh... <laughs> I mean, I would juice box, but we did just promise to never drink milk again. Um, let's, let's, let's not be too hard on her to start. <laughs> you know we're only supposed to meet once a day, right? Why does your voice sound so grim? Naturally, I've read the manual. Judging by the pictures, the overdose side effects are the usual headaches, dizziness, exhaustion. Basically nothing I can't handle by myself. After all, now I know how to do it. Didn't reply. Aren't you even a little bit happy? Not even the slightest bit? Um. The exhaustion. The exhaustion is a mood. So, I'm pretty exhausted after today. Well, I guess you are too. It's not true. You need to go to bed. No, you've been in control for way too long already. It's my turn now. Alright. I'll just stay silent until the medicine's effects wear off. How about that? Hey. You can't do that. You need to do your best to make me feel better. That's exactly what I'm doing. What a bully. Actually, why am I even worried about this? In reality, I don't need you. At all. Hmm? I'm so energetic and I feel great, which means I can do anything. And you, you can only watch and agonize over your uselessness. 
<laughs> I can imagine how angry you are right now. Um... God, even the- even the pause screen is a jump scare. Um... Cass? Cass, are there separate- separate save slots? I didn't see, like, any- any, like, settings menu. Uh, there was no, like, control descriptions other than just advanced text. So, uh... And- and escape to, uh... To get to the pause menu, so, um... Fireflies? Sure, we'll go with that. What made you so happy all of a sudden? Why would I be sad? I remember yourself a couple of hours ago. I don't know what you mean. Stop lying. No, -uh, I still don't understand. Whatever. Unlike you, I won't forget that pathetic snotty girl for a long time. She just whines and whines all the time. Don't even try ruining my mood. I want to have fun while we're together, alright? So you're the one calling the shots now? Yeah. Let's see how long you can last. We'll see. Yeah. I... Am I really that pathetic? Say something. I can feel tears streaming down my cheeks, hanging from my chin, and then falling on my clothes, burning holes in them. Uh, oh, this girl. What if... Huge... Huge box? I mean... I mean, Demon Juice box is pretty tall, right? I... Yeah. <laughs> I support you on your, uh... On your huge box endeavors. One more sip. That was fast, but not unexpected. Hey, at least I tried. Go wash your face, and we'll decide what to do with you. I'm in front of a mirror again. I keep staring at my reflection, trying not to get distracted by the sneery looks the walls are giving me. Trying not to drown in their giggling. Then, me in the mirror also shows a creepy smile and bares her teeth at me. I shut my eyes, but that doesn't help. It wouldn't have helped even if I sunk through the floor. I start counting in my mind. Two squared, two by two squared, a square squared, a square pyramid squared, a pyramidal structure cubed, a pyramidal structure hypercubed. I feel better, but my head is splitting apart now. Big fan of apologizing. I'm sorry for being rude. It's not your fault. It's never your fault. It's fine. You can keep blame keep on blaming yourself, but don't overdo it. I don't know why, but I thought I'd be able to take control. I was almost ready to. I was sure I'd be able to change something. After all, I was able to buy milk, you know? Yeah, you ought to know how challenging it was. Is that why you threw away the medicine? What a stupid decision, right? I mean, it is a bad decision. Not in the beat yourself up way. <laughs> but, undoubtedly. Moreover, it's dangerous. I know. And you keep pushing me. Then why did you do that? I felt like I'd be able to fight it on my own. It's true, the, pa the pain subsided for a bit at that time, but... And I feel it triple in force. It hurts so bad. You know what to do. 
Dejected, I reach out for the shelf of my medicine, swallow the pills one after another, chasing away the unpleasant visions that keep floating up in my memory. And yet, my mind still draws a terrifying picture, lumps of coagulated blood and transparent coating traveling down my esophagus, scratching its soft walls, leaving behind furrows. I shake my head violently. I don't care if it makes me feel dizzy or worsens my pain, I just don't want to think about something so repulsive. You still haven't changed. What do you mean? You're afraid of being alone. This worries you much more than pain. Yeah, I guess. Toss the last pill into the air and catch it with my mouth. Side points. I lay on the floor. I look at the ceiling. I can clearly hear water running in the metal pipes up there. Hear the cracking concrete blocks that will someday surely fall on my head. But I'm not afraid of that at all. I can't imagine my death coming from above. Rather, it's rearing its claws from somewhere below, waiting for me to lose focus. Do you want to talk about it? No, I've had enough talking. Well, not talking does make for a good visual novel. What do you want, then? I... I just want to lie down for a bit. It's a visual novel, not an audio novel. <laughs> We're making it an audio novel. <laughs> Even if the ceiling is bound to collapse, it won't be today. Can you stay silent, please? I need to get my thoughts in order. Sorry. carefully extract thoughts that are yet to be fully formed from my head and lay them out on the ceiling in ordering the rows. Now it's my corkboard. In hopes of seeing the whole picture, I swip th switch them from one place to another, pile them on top of each other, scatter them around. In the end, I throw them off with my hand, annoyed, and start over. I can't do it. You can always imagine your thoughts as something small and swarming, like cockroaches. Ew, I hate cockroaches. Can I make them fireflies? I don't mind either way. We got fireflies. I don't even have time to think, to blink before my thoughts, they're fireflies now, start whirling all over the ceiling of their own accord, forming whimsical patterns. I can only observe them and wait for the right moment. It's just, that moment doesn't come. The mocking sounds of flapping wings coming from the ceiling make me start losing my patience. Enough! I hate you! I spring to my feet and scry scream at the top of my lungs. Fireflies scatter. Good job. Let's start over. No way! Unstable behavior makes you look bad. Good spot to save. Okay, I'm trusting you. <laughs> I don't give a damn! So that doesn't bother you? Shut it. God, <laughs> I want, I want to add so, so many caveats to both of these answers. Should it worry you that unstable behavior makes you look bad? Um... The 
this sucks. Like, I feel like either answer I choose now, I need to, like, I need to make real-world qualifications. <laughs> Let's say, yes, it is important, within reason, to know how you come across to others. What do you want me to do then? I don't know. It's up to you. Not exactly helpful voice in our head. <laughs> You're at it again. What do you mean? Never mind. And I've changed my mind anyway. Please don't say something for this long anymore. I'm having a hard time without your help. Fine. I raise my eyes to look at the ceiling once more. Sadly, my fireflies seem to be hiding somewhere. I need to find them. Glance around the room. There are too many places for a creature as small as a firefly to hide here. They can be anywhere. Suddenly I hear a deafening rumble. The clock just hit midnight. It's so late already, but I can't go to bed right now. Will you help me? Please tell me you'll help me. Come on, stop bullying me. You promised to talk to me. What were you thinking while lying on the floor? What do you mean? You should know it better than anyone else. <laughs> That's the thing. I have no idea. This is weird. Will you tell me? I... <sighs> I roll my sleeves and start rubbing my eyes intensely. They're so itchy. Why are you crying? My eyes are itchy. Um... Did he bring milk? I wonder if I tear out all my eyelashes one after another, will my eyes stop itching? I wonder if I tear out all my eyelashes one after another, all my eyelashes one after another, if I tear out all my eyelashes one after another. What have you done? I need to gather the glass and then, and then I need to have a bath and then... Here, drink some milk. No! Stand in the middle of the room, my mouth agape. Gasping for air, I think I just experienced death. I don't know any way to, to, other way to explain what happened. Hi there, Coniko. It's good to see you. It's also we we have we have a little bit of a heavy time going on. I hope you're well. I hope you're in a, a good mental state if you're gonna stick around. <laughs> Well, that was surely something. Will you tell me or not? Choose the other option for Ghost That Seed? Cool! Glad that I could make my character experience death? About what? Let's go look for the fireflies instead. You're acting weird. Help me instead of rubbing in your mouth. I've already had enough adventures before bed. I need to gather my thoughts quickly and go to bed. And my thoughts are hiding from me. <laughs> to be honest, I have no idea where to look for them. Me neither. I guess we'll have to tear the whole place apart. No, 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 and no! If I make even the smallest of messes here, I'll feel really bad. All the things should stay in their places, and that's it. Why? Do 
You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. I don't and I won't. All right then, so we need to find a bunch of tiny insects inside a mountain junk without moving anything even an inch. Yeah. My oh my. I have an idea. Last time, becoming a visual novel character helped me achieve my goal. Now I want to become a point-and-click adventure game character. Let me just, uh... Go ahead and add meta commentary into the content warning. I know that some people have, have trouble with it, so. You know, those games have moments where you just look at look at different objects and something inevitably happens. It sounds so fun! <laughs> Hi there, Eugene. I hope you're doing well. What about the things you use regularly? Do you refuse to touch them as well? It would make it even more interesting. This is so childish. You wanna know what's the best part? You'll be the one doing it! Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Frank, for us uh, for another gift so derogin. Please stop. Please stop! Ah. <laughs> too many, too many, too many! Some weather induced pain, but aside from that, today's been mostly good. Well, I'm 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 glad you're you're doing mostly okay. But yes, Frank a sweetheart. But also please. <laughs> oh no. Oh yes. I start panicking as soon as I get in a multiple choice situation <laughs> mood. I just keep changing my mind and end up crying and running away. Do you want that to happen? You're such a handful. You've already proven that you're able to make decisions. Why not continue on that road? Come on, don't be so boring. I was just teasing you. You don't have to bear the whole burden. Asking for help is a reasonable decision, too. Let's begin already! I go to the middle of the room and look around. Where would I hide if I were a tiny firefly? Ah, this is so thrilling! My heart gets warmer from the pleasant anticipation. Hey. What? Look down. I look down. After a moment, a small ball of light... Uh, a small ball of light and warmth crawls out from under my sweater. Wowee! <laughs> Wowee! Interesting choice, Rohaji. I suppose I need to honor it. <sighs> this this definitely this definitely provides a different kind of Kind of texture to this game, huh? <sighs> Glad to be of service. <sighs> just, just for a little while. <laughs> I carefully grab the firefly. It's pleasantly scorching to the touch. I put it on my shoulder. I'm sorry, little guy. Time to come home now. So it was an order, the firefly slowly drifts up, circles around my head for a bit, and then flies into my ear with the speed of a bullet. <laughs> it tickles! Come on down. Let's look for the others. Yeah! Oh, we actually are... 
we'll leave that for later. We actually are a, uh, a point and click character now, huh? Um. Ducks like plants, right? Right! Insects enjoy pollinating the flowers and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I guess. To get close to the flower shelf, I sniff around. The leaves... The leaves? The, the leaves smell of dust and cardboard. And death. You know those plants are long dead, right? I'm not sure a dead plant will be able to attract any insects. Well, we kind of don't have a choice here, you know? Still, you're right. Let's continue searching. Why don't you just throw them out? Aren't you listening to me at all? <laughs> um, computers are full of bugs. I looked. At, I look at my laptop. I haven't touched it for years, so it's covered with a layer of dust as thick as my finger. That's that's a lot of dust. But it's all right. I'm, I fear it. Why? It's a long and boring story. Wonderful. Tell me about it. Mm. I insist. I don't remember how it appeared in my room. One of my parents probably bought it here because they couldn't find a better place for it. They didn't prohibit me from using it. On the other hand, they encouraged me to do so. Sure, I spent my whole days in front of the screen. Games, drawing, engineering calculator, 3D modeling. So much fun stuff to do. You had amusing hobbies? Yeah, I did. Before entering the web. Hmm? Imagine this. You're a hamster that lives underground. You have everything for comfortable living. Did you imagine? As always, your analogies are spot on. Okay, I imagined. Alright, so you're a hamster that lives underground. You have everything for comfortable living, okay? Okay. Wonderful! And here's the situation. You're a hamster that lives... Okay, I got it. Do you want to talk about something else? Yeah. Fine. Suddenly a firefly slowly crawls out of the laptop's vent grill. I reach for it. It gets on top of my palm, blinking all the while. I think it's trying to say something. I can see that myself. If only I knew what. Looks like a cipher. Don't you want to crack it? I changed my mind. I have absolutely no desire to find out what it wants to say. Firefly stops glowing for a moment after that. Then it starts glowing again as if coming back to its senses. For some time it thinks about the future course of actions, then flies up and dashes into my ear. Let's continue searching. Um... Guess we can stay on the... Horrible Technologies wagon we're on. Oh! Sure! Cool. They're, they're music toggles. I look up. Wrong voice. I look up toward a very high place under my ceiling. I can hear a countless number of small legs marching inside the AC unit. Oh well. <laughs> I said Owl City? <laughs> What happened? Fireflies can't be friends with cockroaches. We better look somewhere else. Why would cockroaches be there? Have you forgotten? You were the one who told me to think of my thoughts as cockroaches. Yes, but... They became fireflies afterwards, but cockroaches don't just disappear like that. So they occupy this place. Do you understand now? I do. Ironic considering my current state. And who, what do you mean by that? Hmm. 
<laughs> well, that's funny about that. I imagine myself being a firefly that's looking straight at a giant fan. And... I'd be so jealous. The only thing preventing it from flying is a cage that's locked in. And the cable. It's like an inmate, if you think about it. It's so sad. Yeah. Let's continue searching. Must have at least three music devices at all times. Notes? Your usual notebook page is glued to the wall with duct tape. Numbers are drawn on them. It's the only kind of information I can take in with a tr without trouble. Dosage and side effects? Yeah. Thought you know them by heart. Yeah. This is not your handwriting, is it? Of course it's not. Shaky broken lines, ugly numbers. It's not writing, it's more like claw marks. Don't forget to thank your mom. I don't need your advice. The screen makes the pages rustle restlessly, and for a moment a firefly appears from underneath one of them. After looking around in a business-like manner, it takes off in a, into a business-like flight and ends up entering my business-like ear. Hey. Let's continue searching. Still procrastinating that. This is my sketchbook. Half its pages are blank, which means it'll still be good for, for a couple of years. We draw that rarely. Why? Isn't that obvious? If I run out of pages, I'll have to buy a new sketchbook. Can't get to the stationery store on foot. I'll have to take the bus. Do you even realize what kind of nightmare that can turn into? Yeah, take care, Cass. Should be fine. Thank you for the vote of confidence. Well, maybe you can ask your mom to buy you one? Buy what? Ask whom? Can you even form coherent sentences? Don't play dumb. Ask your mom to buy you a notebook instead. Instead? So you want me to form a string of actions, but you're also telling me to do one instead of another? Then how would I decide which action to take? You're so dyslexic. Man, you're a tough case. You lack empathy. Is that my fault? I get closer to the sketchbook, stepping over the wires, sleeping bag, cracks in the laminate, and the window's reflection. The sketchbook is lying on the stool. In my height, it seems the stool is missing two legs. I squat and look again. All the legs are in place. I'd be able to think of an interesting allegory. Oh, let's not go there, okay? Stand up and study the sketchbook from inches away. Its pages are pure white. The last drawing is buried on the previous page, the way it should be. Too bad. I'd love to see it. Maybe next time. A sudden gust of chilly wind breaks into the room and makes the pages rustle. Oh no! I shut my eyes. The distinctive sound of pages turning echoes with the headache in my head. I know what's gonna happen. The rustling has stopped, even though the wind is still howling in every direction. It can only mean one thing. The notebook is open on the first page. If I wait a little longer, the wind will close it. I won't have to look. So I wait a little longer. If I wait... Open your eyes. No! It's okay. Just do it. No way! I know you're lying! Calm down. No! Calm down. No! Calm down. No! Calm down. No! Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Fine. I open my eyes with the utmost caution. The notebook is still open in the middle. No drawings. Nothing. The pages are still pure white. Did I imagine it? I don't know. Did you? You're the smart one here, you tell me. Next time, don't close your eyes. Why did you... 
couldn't finish speaking because the pages started moving again. Don't close your eyes. Don't make me do it, I'm scared. Trust me. The rustling grows louder. Pages lift up, I can almost see the outlines of drawings on previous pages. No way. Everything that is in the past should stay in the past. You couldn't convince me, that's it, I'm closing my eyes. Look, look there. Barely visible light seeps through the pages. With every new gossip comes brighter and brighter. A firefly! Wind immediately stops. For a moment, the world sinks into perfect silence, but only for a moment. The buzz that has always been haunting me fills the surroundings. But it doesn't matter now. Goodness gracious, little boy! You make me so scared! The firefly blinks. Flies up and it flies up. Hmm. Flies up in and enters my ear, buzzing loudly all the way. I spend some time looking for the perfect spot in my head, then its buzzing dies down. Phew. Are you okay? We're running short on time, so let's continue searching. Oh, we have a finish searching button now. But I gotta, I gotta gather my thinky thoughts. <laughs> Welcome, Darth. I'm not a marshmallow peep. I was just, I was just polymorphed into this by, by a certain Rohajin. Just a couple more minutes, Ricky. Also, I appreciate the, um, the, the, uh, Content warning reminders, Frank. This is definitely a little bit of a heavy game, so don't want to catch anyone by surprise. Oh, hey, light bulbs. Are you serious? What's wrong? Just think about it. Why do fireflies be attracted to light? Regardless, I think they're quite. Uh, I, th I think they're quite self-sufficient already in that regard. I got distracted by, uh, by chat discussing, uh, discussing marshmallows and chocolate milk at, uh, use the wrong voice. I'm so sorry. Well, only if they perfectly want to, purposely want to lower their self-esteem. Hmm. Um... Get close to the waste bin and look inside it with curiosity. Pill packaging, notebook pages, and other garbage. Boring. There's nothing here. Indeed, no self-respecting firefly would have hide in a heap of garbage. Can't disagree with you here. Why do I feel like the idiot? Why do I feel like the bird brain? <laughs> Speaking of, <laughs> thank you for the redeem, Rohajin. Uh, bed pups. <laughs> this is my sleeping bag. It's soft and warm, but I'm sure that no living creature would be able to resist the temptation to spend a minute or two inside. They'd want to dig deep into it with a couple of favorite items, close their eyes, and then... Hey, did you fall asleep? Huh? Well, apparently the hotkey that I had for, uh, for concatenate is, uh, <laughs> is the full screen toggle. And observe. Sure. It's the vibes, right? Miss the market old flush. <laughs> I mean the um thank you for the quench and the dilate. <laughs> big big spender over here. Um, I mean like the actual creaky flush that I have was was uh was was made one of a kind. So uh 
I don't think I don't think we have any plans to mass produce it anytime soon, but Uh, Quentin Ivy. Yes. <laughs> Kill just a few points. <laughs> I feel like I, I have streams where, like, I get very few redeems. Um... And then I have streams where it's just all redeems all the time. Um, <laughs> so on the on the streams when there aren't a whole lot of redeems, I'm like, what are they saving up for? What horrible combination do they have concocted? <laughs> I appreciate it, machine. Very good to see you. It's never a requirement to stop by, but it makes me happy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the for the gifts of the Darth. That's very sweet of you. I was about to just reflexively thank Frank. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh Kuniko, she uh she just recently had um had her, her first stream. So, you know, if you wanna if you wanna go go check her out. Give her some support. <laughs> so indignant. <laughs> uh, I mean, I also tell Frank to stop every time he gives a sub, so... Um, also, yeah, I did, I did figure that you meant the PNG Darth, but... <laughs> it's very kind of you, cat. I gently slap my cheeks to return myself to the senses. It's already way past midnight. Usually I'd be sleeping like a log at this time, but right now I can't. Let's continue searching. Hey, maybe we'll find something inside? No, my thoughts don't have a feature of putting to sleep. Quite the contrary, they always cause insomnia, just like tonight. What? They said searching here is meaningless. Uh, dandy dandy backpack. I look down. My school bag, worn down and silly, is almost screaming out of its own uselessness. From another angle, it looks like a full belly. Its contents are also, are also regurgitating, decomposing, and turning into a sticky, mushy substance. What a cool image. I need to remember this. Cool is certainly a way you could describe that. <laughs> Frank. Frank. No. No. Totally not cool. Tell me what's inside your bag instead. Nothing special. Mostly just all sorts of books. I've taken out all the pens and notebooks out of there, and I'm not interested in anything else. You used to go to school, didn't you? <laughs> Why? Why are you all like this? <gasps> yeah, I did. I had a blast all the way! Are you sure you understood my question? The second funniest? <laughs> Is the first one where he just, uh, where he just totally cursed you out? Or... <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> that one. <laughs> oh. Hi, Cass. We are, um, we are still looking around the room. 
you think everything in my life should be doom and gloom? Well, you're wrong. All right, all right. What'd you like the most there? Hmm. Well, the rooms are really bright. Not like at home. That's it. Don't rush me. Let me remember. Well, the beds are also soft, and the food was nice. By the way, I attended all the classes. The others always skipped. They probably got told off so hard. I smile at Jet, like absorbed in warm memories. You never graduated, though. Yeah. Do you remember your last day there? It was a normal day. Dad picked me up earlier than usual. Told me that I'm already too old for the school curriculum. I also realized that some time ago. Tasks were way too easy. And then we got into the car and went home. Mom greeted us there, we had dinner, and went to our rooms. And what happened then? I don't remember. Does it even matter? What? What does what does a bag of cricket even look like? What is happening to my days? <laughs> just, just puddle nuggets. <laughs> um. Okay. Good. I got my bag again. Light pouring into the room through the window glints on the metal, metal parts. And there's also a shadow underneath it, which means it's real. Sadly. Whatever, I don't care anyway. I almost end up kicking the bag in a fit of sudden anger, but I managed to stop myself in the nick of time. If I move it even an inch, the whole picture will collapse and I'll go blind. It's already happened. Countless times. Why do you mean you'll go blind? I spent months memorizing the location of every item in my room. That's why I can see them so clearly and vividly. You won't get it. Look at your feet. I look down and see that a small insect is crawling toward me from my bag. Barely glowing and it can't even fly. Guess this firefly is really tired. I bend down to pick it up. The firefly starts glowing brightly as soon as I touch it, and then flies up. Hey, you go, boy! Good job! After doing a victory lap around the room, it flies toward me with high speed. I shut my eyes, anticipating the firefly to enter my ear. That's exactly what happens. After it gets inside, it buzzes for a little while and then goes silent. This one is kind of sad. I wonder why. Doesn't matter. It matters it's no longer alone. Sure. Let's continue searching. Um. Still postponing. I doubt it. The compartments are locked. What if? I don't even want to think about what's inside. Who knows what I'll end up imagining? Fair enough. Look at the alarm clock as time continues its unstoppable flow. It's so late. Are you tired? I'm glad I am. I let out a theatric yawn and hold out my arms to the sides. One, two. Then I raise them above my head. Three, four. Maybe a little workout will help me freshen up. Good idea. Do you remember the exercises you've been taught? I think so. I take a hesitant stance. What was it? Heels together, toes apart. Whatever, I'll go with that. Countdown, five minutes. Fine. You have a clock right in front of you, though. Can't look at its hands for too long. First, I feel like they start moving in the wrong direction. And they disappear altogether. And things always get messy. Last time I saw a pair of eyes on a clock face. And also, I used to hear voices back in the day. They pleaded for help, I think. What a mess. Truly a mess. It was a mess, right? A mess. Well, are you counting down? My god, finally. What do you mean? I was trying to get through to you for half an hour. Uh -huh. Forget it. Do you see the firefly? Mm, no. Let's continue searching then. Uh... Turn my 
eyes toward an inconspicuous shelf near the mirror. There's a glass with a toothbrush sitting on it, and a small towel is hanging nearby. What a wonderful sight. My fireflies are smart and good. They would never get in there. They know about personal hygiene. Okay, let's look somewhere else. Not yet. I tilt my head backwards and almost fall over. The closet is hanging under the ceiling, at least 300 feet off the floor. Are you joking? Who left my room? Not everything here is for me to use. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. At all. Like, totally. I'm definitely not worried. Not even the littlest bit. Not even a smidgen of the littlest bit. Not even for a thousandth of a percent. That's how much I don't care. Hey, I'm not even down telling you how much I don't care. In this moment on, I'm ignoring you. Oh, no, you don't. And act normal. It's not easy to get out of here. <laughs> And what are those? Ah, uh, those? Those are the photos of my best memories. But they're blank. I stared at them so intensely that I burned them with my eyes. <laughs> now they're just covering the cracks in the walls. Cracks? Forget it. Are we continuing the search or what? Okay, we are. The umbrella emanates a faint sense of coolness. Faint, faint, faint sense of coolness. No wonder it's the only thing that defends me against the thunderclouds that gather under my ceiling. Such a blessing that I can do without my help. Still, firefly won't hide in a place like that. It'll catch a cold and be unable to fly. You don't want to check it? Why? I'm sure we won't find anything there. Look at the amount of pills and it makes me feel dizzy. I don't want to think about it. I don't. What's wrong? I almost skipped my dose for today. How reckless I could have died. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, calm down. You've already fixed that. Yes, because he ordered me to. Things could have been much worse. Yeah. Maybe deep sigh closer and extend my hand. Oh, it's warm! Some of those words like my lips when the bottle overturns. Bells rain down from it along with them. A firefly! Hooray! After circling above my head a couple of times, it finally ends up my palm. The firefly rushes up my arm, and upon reaching my shoulder, crosses straight into my ear. The mind becomes a little bit clearer. Guess we've been putting off the inevitable. I cannot even click on it. Well, I guess that's all of them. Um... You found all the fireflies! Amazing! I guess... Was there... Did I have the ability to go to the balcony? I managed to gather my thoughts, but something so worries me. On the other hand, I wasn't supposed to be happy anyway. Why not? If I lose something and then find it, it's just going back to the starting point. No changes at all. A zero sum. And happiness is always about being positive, right? You shouldn't think too much. It hurts you. I don't want to sleep. How about you get some fresh air before sleeping? What do you mean? 
Well, go to the balcony. Breathe in some air. Somehow those words triggered a panic attack in me. Subconsciously step away from the balcony. I don't think it's a good idea. Why? This may sound silly, but I feel like someone is watching me. There's no way somebody cares about you that much. That is not the way I would put it. Uh huh? Fuck it. Sure. Just for a couple minutes, okay? My apartment building looks like a bottomless cooking pot, but instead of soot, it has hundreds of concrete and metal boxes on its walls. There are lights on in the windows, there are muffled voices coming up from the inside. A howling wind spirals up and splits into hundreds of independent streams. Seems like it wants to be heard by every person living here. Girl outside of the room, outside of the room. I must feel so... Must feel so lonely living in endless silence. The apartment building is pretty weird, isn't it? I could see the horizon from my window before, and the building grew for miles in both directions. Is at some point it circled around and closed on itself? Nothing unusual about that. How do you feel? Uh, I definitely feel. Um, I definitely feel. Sometimes that's more than enough. Still, you're anxious, aren't you? Of course. Moreover, I'm completely terrified. Was it that obvious? We're looking in every direction, but not up. Uh, this... I've already told you, haven't I? About what? Uh, you know, small stuff. Can small stuff make you terrified? It's hard to explain. I climb up the middle railing and let my legs hang down. I sneak short glances at the abyss from time to time. He replies with angry, cold breath. That's how we interact. Like old friends. Sometimes I feel like the whole world pretends to be crazy. As if it's trying to make me believe in something that doesn't exist. And that's weird, isn't it? Yes, but... At the same time, it makes me feel a little bit happy. Everything around me is created for my sake. To deceive, trick, confuse me. That's true, I guess I'm not so crazy myself after all. Your believing in this is the definition of craziness. You're probably right. Another gust of wind blasts against the pot's walls, smashing glass to dust and blowing away the concrete crust. I, on the other hand, feel a gentle breeze that only ruffles my hair. I'm cold, let's go back inside. Yeah, the, the, the visual design is of both of the games is, is very neat. I return to my room. Thankfully, it hasn't changed one bit during the minutes I was outside. What are you going to do? This was a silly question. I'm going to sleep, of course. Hoping that tomorrow will only come after a year. Or a decade. Imagining myself to be outside of my mortal shell, but at the same time still being me. Ridiculous. Like milk outside a bag of milk. And yet... And yet... You don't have to talk out loud for me to understand that you're worried about me. I know that already. I also know that our time is running short. You won't take another pill? Of course not! In fact, I won't take it tomorrow either. The day after tomorrow. And never ever. That's a goodbye then? No. I have one more small favor to ask. A really, really small one. What is it? I've blurted out way too much today. A lot of stuff I'd want to forget forever. I don't blame you, but was it really necessary? I'll see you tomorrow. No, I wouldn't be able to sleep like this. 
fine. What's the favor? I, um... I nervously scratched my wrist and bite on my lower lip. Wait a minute. You're afraid to tell me? Yes! I'm also scared that something bad might happen if I tell you. I'm also scared that when something bad happens, something way worse will happen. Stop. I get it already. Still, leave you alone until you tell me. Polly. No, you. Crawl in my sleeping bag. The lower part of the room is very cold. I hurry to wrap myself in blankets, even though the electric heater is working hard to keep me warm. I'm sad because the dreams just won't come anymore. You won't believe me if I tell you how I dealt with it at first. Wait. <laughs> Hi there, Moody. Uh, <laughs> I may in fact be doing all three voices, plus the uh, plus plus uh, a certain monster that appeared at the at the beginning. It's uh, it's it, it might be a thing that I do. <laughs> Thank you. That's uh. It's 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 a very kind compliment. I, it makes me happy when people like my voice. <laughs> Range, hold on. I I get ranges and endings confused all the time. Don't you worry, Mooney. <laughs> uh, um. Anyway. You won't believe me if I tell you how I dealt with it at first. Of course I'll believe you. I know. It was a joke. Well, anyway, I washed my teeth. I washed my teeth? I washed my face, brushed my teeth, lined down, and started imagining that I'm watching a dream. I didn't sleep at all, of course, and always looked sleepy in the morning. After a week of insomnia, I started feeling weird and seeing things. Letters floating in the air. Strange silhouettes that appeared in the most unexpected of places, bulging eyes with trembling pale pupils. It was scary, you know? And one day I almost died. I just collapsed in the middle of the room and couldn't move for a while. And then silhouettes, letters, and eyes were hanging over me and hissing. It was horrible. And well deserved, I guess. It felt like I was caught on the biggest lie in the world. Yes, it felt exactly like that. After that, I stopped. But the silhouettes, letters, and eyes stayed there. I guess they like this place. They always fall in my wake, peeping at me, and I'm kind of scared of them and can't even argue with them. But today... Today... Well? I... Still too scared to tell me? Of course, they're still listening, you know? Use your hands. All right. I start chaotically twirling my fingers with enthusiasm, forming complex shapes. You want me to tell you a bedtime story? Shh! I was trying so hard here! Don't you get it? They'll hear you! Relax. Nobody can hear you. So what do you say? I'd be happy to, but I have no idea how to tell them. Oh, it's incredibly easy! Just talk about something without stopping. Sounds silly. But it's not! And meaningless. You don't know what you're talking about. No enough to realize that we'll just end up wasting time. Let's focus on something actually important. Boring. Fine. Close your eyes. Whoa! Bought this a while back, but never, uh, never picked it up. I mean, it's it's pretty short. Um, the the first game is like an hour tops, and apparently this one is only two or three. Um, so it's certainly an experience so far. Yeah. Trying to do a more mask voice on stream for character. How did it go? I admit that, um, 
actually streaming i mean one accepting you know my 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 whole identity and stuff um definitely definitely helps but uh also doing um doing uh voice acting on stream and having people respond well to it has actually made me more comfortable with my lower register but anyway um the, the, I, I very much know that feeling, though. <laughs> um, firstly, congratulations! Um, yeah, but it's, it's definitely a, a common pheno phenomena, phenomena, um, to, like, to even have it, have it be hard for you to replicate what your voice used to sound like, which, you know, Feels nice. I did do a little bit of voice training, but it's it's definitely I I do definitely recommend. For, this is a total aside from the from the horror game that we're playing, but anybody who um uh, anybody who who does plan on you know making changes to their voice or or even doing more extreme voice acting, I definitely do recommend at least having enough tools to. Make sure that you're not straining your voice and have like some warm up and cool down exercises. They definitely help, but I know not everybody has like proper trans friendly um, or, or even just voice training in general um, available to them, but you know. Take care of your voice. Hum into a straw. Heat from fire. Thank you for the quench, Koniko. Uh, I'll, I'll proceed after this soup. <sighs> Ally? Excuse you, cats. Um, okay, I said that I would I would continue after uh after after taking a sip, but um but um I I don't know the exact origins of heat from fire fire from heat, but um that that's kind of the um the 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 most typical, most widespread sort of like voice priming. Um sort of sort of phrase the idea is that you sort of you have one phrase that you are really really comfortable saying um that you can just subconsciously or without without thinking about it you can pull that specific voice and intonation out of your head um and that sort of primes you to have your to have your voice kind of in the right place for when you continue to talk so it is it's also a <laughs> to people in the know. It's also a um, a a shorthand for I am trans femme. <laughs> so <laughs> you have those for other voices. I mean, yeah, it's it's definitely not something that you need to be trans to use. It is, I mean, it's something that that uh that that I use a lot. I mean, <laughs> there were a couple of times like yesterday when I was on Boss's stream. This is a little peek behind the curtain. But, um, <laughs> um, but for, for Virgilio's voice in, um, in, uh, in Valhalla yesterday, I muted myself and literally, literally went served in a man's hat. And that, that was my priming phrase for Virgilio's voice. <laughs> uh, so, you know. <laughs> Fun times. Anyway, <laughs> I I sometimes get a little bit carried away talking about voice things. Um. Anyway, we were playing a video game, huh? Uh, Virgilio is the uh is like the the pompous um like question mark on forehead 
uh, orders drinks in riddles, yeah. Based on Steph Sterling. But, um, anyway. <laughs> we were, we were playing milk outside. <laughs> I'm gonna keep doing that. <laughs> I wake up on a wooden bench. In front of me lies a narrow, dimly lit alley. Awfully familiar road. Where could I have seen it? Finally. Oh. I hear a voice. <laughs> uh, I hear a voice coming from the side. I turn around and see a boy with a, boy with a weird expression on his face. You're late. Um, who are you? Boy blinks in bewilderness. Bewilderment? We're not going. We're not going anywhere like this. Try again. Then he takes a very deep breath. You are late. Stared him, confused. He stares back, also confused. S sorry. The boy nods, satisfied. See. Much better. Do you have a name? My name's Tresca. I give the brat an evaluating look. He's so young yet already coming at me with questions like that. None of your business. And besides, why do you want to tell me what I'm doing here? Also, cat time is over. Um... Also, yes, uh, it's based on an old character of Steph's from when they were with Destructoid, I think? Like, it, w it was a while back, so. Yeah. Um, hey, that's rude. It's not like there's someone else here besides me. Haven't they told you anything? I know all there is to know, for one. Without what? You're obligated to escort me to the store. Jessica says that and strikes a victory pose. No way I'm doing that. You do understand that refusal, refu refusal is futile? Refusal is futile. It's very hard to say. Why aren't you full of yourself? I'm serious. I'm not the one who decided that. Do you think I'm delighted with your company? He's weird, constantly shifting between happiness, sadness, loudness, silence. He's a wacko, and his name is stupid. Are we going or what? You can go, and I need to think. I'd be happy to, but I don't know the way. Jessica puts on a cunning smile. I bite my lower lip in frustration. I'll be honest with you, but I don't like you. I simply burst out laughing in reply. <laughs> I do like you, though. And he grabs my hand without hesitation. I don't even have time to retort. Lead the way. He's too skippy. Don't like that. My trip to the store went fine, if not for the fact that Tresca was walking away faster than me. And on the other hand, at times he stopped abruptly and went backwards, sighting the ground underneath his feet. In the end, the trip took a lot longer than it should. After the reaching the store's doors, we're greeted by a sign. We're closing in 20 minutes. What the Friday do? Okay, they're working hours in this, what, in this way. They probably have special staff for this. Tresca's voice is very hard to place. It is. <laughs> I go into falsetto and then bring it pretty much down as far as it can go. Which is different from being in my, you know, chest, my, my, my full voice, my mixed voice, and going as high as I can go. Oh no, I'm talking about boy stuff again. <laughs> Thank you for the quench. They probably have special staff for this. Someone who runs a change of sign every five minutes. It's convenient. Sure. Are you joking? <laughs> yeah. You're so annoying. Much better than being boring. How old are you, by the way? None of your business. Ah. Uh, what's your name? 
none of your business. It's ready to slap the living hell out of the brat, but the scary looking man suddenly appeared behind the glass. He's holding a cardboard sign that says we're closing in 15 minutes. Let's go, what are you waiting for? Let's go, what are you waiting for? Huh? Oh, yeah. I remember this. After another round of going across the long row of canned products, we realized that we're lost. I can't believe you don't know where they sell milk. I, um... Maybe we should ask someone, somebody for directions? Sure. Hey, wait up! Tresca lets go of my hand and walk confidently toward one of the few store's customers. The person is standing with their back to us, studying something on the shelf. Hello, can I... I can't, I can't hear neither the second part of his, his question, nor the reply he gets. My good-for-nothing friend freezes in place, looking the customer straight in the eye. Hurry toward them. Z yours. The customer talks to me, speaks with disgust while wearing a scornful expression. I... Um... If he's yours, please get him away from me. He, yes, I'm sorry. Grab Tresca's hand and lead him away. Still looking at the customer, his mouth ajar and eyes popped. He's also shaking. Only when we turn around the corner, Tresca calms down. What was that? I... I got so scared. He said... What? No, not again! Suddenly, Tresca starts screaming like crazy. I cover his mouth with my hand. His face is burning. He's crying. Can you act normal? You don't understand. Of course I don't. I don't understand anything. Knowing other people is so wrong, though. This is something you don't understand, it seems. You mean? Who, me? Tresca pushes me away and runs off. Trat! Edge of my vision, I see the store staff hanging a new sign on the door. There you are! I meet Tresca at the cash register. Before that, I managed to visit the milk, the milk department. <laughs> An entire department for milk! After finding out where it was... Hey, yo, move! I hear an angry voice coming from the other side of a long cube and it's formed after Tresca. Squeeze toward him. What happened? The boy doesn't respond, he just looks at his feet and sniffs. The cashier towers over him. There's a bag of milk lying between them. Is he yours? Yes. Just leave him home next time. People in the queue nod in agreement. Pay for the goods, please. Yes, of course. And the waiting fee. What? You heard me. I did, but that's unheard of. Tresca starts giggling all of a sudden. For the fact that you're... <laughs> but... You heard me. You know what? In a fit of rage, I throw a banknote to the cashier. Much higher value than needed, even counting in the su all the stupid fees. Then grab a bag of milk and turn around on my heels. We're leaving, Tresca. Spend the whole trip back in silence. At some point, we end up turning right toward a gas station. There, Tresca finally breaks the silence. Do you like ice cream? No. Okay. Look at the boy's face. A light flickers in his eyes for a brief moment and then goes out. You know. Turns away from the path and walks straight toward the highway with determination. He stared his back, confused. Seems like you're not helping me at all. A new playful light flickers in Tresca's eyes.
Okay. Well, okay. Usually I would, um, Uh, usually I would I would give give my my thoughts on a, on a game during the credits but uh, I am still processing them um oh good it's standard ending so depends how much I what I want to read into and how much um Hmm. I mean, my my first thought is that um is that the boy is representative of 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 the girl essentially, like her her coping mechanisms and uh, state of mind um, with the girl's point of view being um, I mean I guess either if we're getting meta me the player or or the uh, the voice in her head um the reference to him being a son makes me wonder if that was just someone being mistaken or if that or if I'm supposed to read more into that but uh I mean as everybody was treating was treating him like her son I'm gonna get some more endings uh, <laughs> and see and see what I feel uh what what I can figure from there that um I mean, I know that I, I definitely got that it was a, a reference to the to the first game, but hmm. a third person perspective, how she thinks people see her. But yeah, um, actually, before before I get any any hints, um, I am going to take a quick break. I do at least want to uh, hurry through maybe maybe one more ending but um i am going to refill my water um and it's getting a little bit late so we'll see how far we get um i would like to finish everything in in one stream but anyway water first i recommend that you you stand up stretch uh get some water um don't stare at the screen too hard <laughs> uh, yes, I'll, I'll get some water. Um, but yeah, I will be back in just a couple of minutes after I have a sippy.
Oh, how much did you miss me? Um. <laughs> uh, I'm. I'm sure, Frank. <laughs> but yeah, I um. Oh. <laughs> the why is the three commas in the row just make it so heartbreaking? <laughs> I'm so sorry, Cass. I'll never leave again. Um. But, um, yeah, I hope you all have your water. Weather roller coaster. Oh, I am so sorry, Wahajin. I, I, uh, I understand the feeling. Uh, I, I don't think I'm... I'm probably not impacted quite as much as you, but I definitely understand having some wild weather and, uh... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I definitely may have been slightly, uh, scared out of my brains with, uh, with a surprisingly, uh, like, surprisingly heavy thunderstorm recently. So, you know, that's fun. Anyway. Um... I continue. Um. So, I guess before before I follow along, cast. Um. My assumption is that there would be another ending where you don't get all the fireflies. Maybe even two, where you only get some. Or get none. Uh, if you can, if you can even, well, other than I guess the first one. Anyway, um, I don't know if there would also be one for getting all of them without it getting too late. But uh, anyway, is there? Um, I guess we can get some of the other dialogue while we're here. A lot of people act like this. Really? There's nothing to be shameful about snapping at someone. You have a reason for that. You did have a reason, didn't you? You'll surely get better, believe me. And now, start over. <laughs> You're at it again. What do you mean? Never mind. I've changed my mind anyway. Please don't skip the uh, Okay. Is it possible to just say forget about them and go to bed? No, you don't get it. If I'm thinking about something, I need to finish my thoughts or else. That's around the room. There are too many places for a creature as small as a firefly to hide here. You can be anywhere. Something like I hear a deafening rumble. The clock just hit midnight. It's so late already, but I can't go to bed right now. Can you help me? Please tell me the book. about what choice caused that. <laughs> Does that... Have I locked myself into a bad thing? Are you trying to come up with a reason right now? No, oh, me? No, of course not. I think you forgot to put up your mind block. I can see through you. Rude! Alright then, so we need to find a bunch of them. Uh... So... 
I'm assuming that there's smoke coming from your clothes is not a great thing. But, uh... There's smoke coming from your clothes. <laughs> Whatever. Um, uh, I can't click on that. The sky looks different. That's fun. Um, an extra scene and achievement. Um, like there, there are parts of me that like that are figuring. Yeah, this 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 game is is short enough that like. That it shouldn't be hard to 100%. But there's also part of me that is like, maybe, maybe I just want to get the endings and, uh, and clean up afterward because I'm on stream and it is getting late. <laughs> um, so. If that, if that locks us into the default ending, then I might. I don't even appear to be able to um, uh, I do not appear to be able to just exit the main menu which is an interesting choice <laughs> well guess we can we can be dramatic. <laughs> I did say I would get the other dialogue options. They ultimately die anyway, so why worry? Oh, you're right! In a deep sigh, come closer and extend my hand. Firefly. Laptop. I am, in fact, a hamster. I'm not pertaining to that subject anyway. On one wonderful, one wonderful day, someone digs you up from your hamster house and brings you to the pet store. Now your new home is a cage. It's way more comfortable and warm compared to the underground. The most important part, you have a lot of neighbors here. Their cages are identical to yours. The other hamsters look identical to you, too. That means you're all the same. Apart from the fact that they were born at that shop. You'll ask, what does that indicate? And I'll tell you, nothing at all. Oh, I forgot what I was talking about. Gosh. Okay, let's start over. This time try to avoid stupid hamster analogies. You know I'm not at fault here. So, they had a lot of friends online. Ten, hundreds of them. Impossible to count. Is it impossible though? I had exactly 317 of them. Although I guess nobody counts the exact number of hamsters when they walk into a pet shop. Hey, don't get distracted. Oh, right! From my 317 friends, 68 were into gaming just like me. 138 of them like drawing just like me. The remaining 119 were into calculators and 3D modeling equally. And when I say equally, I don't mean 59 and a half friends on each side. Alright? You can split numbers evenly, no problem. But math doesn't work like that when it comes to friends. Major conundrum, right? Get yeah, to the point. I know, of course, that no real people exist on the web. I also understood that all my friends die the moment I turn off my computer. My laptop, even. But I still wasn't even a bit worried. Why? Do you know what computer programs consist of? It's just a combination of numbers. Which means my friends are also numbers. Isn't that amusing? Not really. Why do you call them your friends? I mean, everyone who shares my interests is my friend. I don't care whether they know about my existence or not. Anyways, as I was saying, every program has its own algorithms and purpose. It's a mathematical formula. And if you saw that formula, you'll be able to protect the program's behavior at any moment. The longer you speak, the less I follow. You don't need to follow me around. Just listen. I sit on the floor and the laptop screen ends up right in front of me. 
something reflected in is my dim face. A web person is just a random picture and a random string of letters. Words and actions from the web person are just executable code. Hey, let me know if you need a break. One day someone appeared. From that point, my laptop was always on. There were no real people on the web, but he was good at pretending. Some moment I let him trick me. Hey, look. Huh? Suddenly a firefly slowly crawls out of the laptop's vent grill. I reach for it, it gets on top of my palm, licking all the while. He's trying to say something. Like a cipher. And what about your story? You must be mad at me for interrupting you. I'm sorry. If you do everything right, I'll finish my story. Maybe. Do you promise? I promise. And if you forget? Then remind me. With a code word, for example. What code word? I'll think of one later. For now, let's keep searching for my fireflies. Go outside as in finish searching and move on to the next... the next segment. I'm assuming that going outside comes after firefly searching regardless. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if we're locked into, into the neutral ending anyway, then, uh, zoop. I managed to gather my thoughts. Something so worries me. On the other hand, I wasn't supposed to be happy anyway. Sleep, get some fresh air. Zoop. That is my thinking, Frank. Mm -hmm. I feel haven't come up with a code word. You're the one to remember your promise. You don't need a code word anymore. I don't like when this happens. I want to remember certain things only when I want to. Nonetheless, you've made that promise. Take care, Ayajin. Thank you very much for stopping by. Enjoy food. And I'll keep it, but you need to keep in mind that from this moment on, every word will bring me pain. I bent down and imagined falling into the abyss of exactly two minutes before I meet my end. My best friend! You know the combination of letters he used instead of his name wasn't that cool. Well, the combination of pixels he had instead of his photo was also boring and unattractive. This is so strange and wrong, breaking the rules of being online. Why was he doing that? Maybe his code was a few lines short? I don't quite get what you mean. I could tell you about those rules. You can't find them anywhere, but I'm smart, so I figured them out myself. Although... I'm not sure if I should divulge them. Why? When I try to say what I think out loud, I tend to make mistakes. If I make just a single one, everything that comes after contradicts my thoughts. And I end up with the opposite position. 
And I don't want that. I knew that logic would be better for you to just shut your mouth forever. Yeah, that's my dream. Keep my mouth shut, never get up from bed, never see or hear anything. Just dream on and on. Oh, why is everything so terrible? Don't get distracted. So what was that about your friend? My friend? Ah, uh, yes. He... he was brazen enough to... Come on, gather your thoughts. He somehow made me believe that he was real. He kept describing someone else's life to me in detail as if it was him. And he expected me to do the same. And then I told him everything about myself, without hiding a single thing. I grit my teeth. The wind whips my face without mercy. It slices my skin into uneven stripes, as if it fits a piece of thin cloth. Thank you for the quench. Hi, Gorgies! You're having a time. He knew more about me than anyone else in the world. <laughs> Sure, we can. We can nuggetify. One second. Eep. Ta da! <laughs> he knew more about me than anybody else in the world. You know what he did? Yes. <laughs> Sending an army of bots to harass me was probably fun. And what's most important, it was a win-win situation. They spawn here and there, simple bits of code that are effortless to run. No wonder the algorithm assigns that pattern more often than the others on the front of the list. Text and video generators go to work at the same time. My name services on the web more and more. It's unbearable. Unbearable. From around every corner, every balcony, ceiling, attic, wall, I feel many pairs of watchful eyes directed at me. And now they watch me from the screens, too. But I'll put an end to it. I decided a long time ago. Though, maybe I decided only... My body finally crashes into the ground, smashing into millions of tiny pieces like porcelain. It's my second death for today already. I'm cold. Let's go back inside. Whew. Um, that a second thought, I go toward my laptop and yank the power cable from the outlet. That's it. That's it. That's it. What are you going to do? Going to sleep. How's the bag of milk? We did promise to never drink milk again. Um, <laughs> this game is is a lot. Um, there's there's a lot to read into, and it's very visceral. Um, it's very interesting, though. We have already gotten one ending, so I'm skipping past dialogue we've already read. So, I'm so sorry if this makes it unwatchable to anybody who's just coming in. Forwarding through a boy, getting some milk. Mm. <laughs> 
I mean, it's, it's a little hard to fast forward through television. I guess if you have, like, a recording box. There also does not seem to be a way to skip the credits. Well, <laughs> time to hang out. Um... What is a brain if not a recording box? I mean, a brain is many things. That is, that is one of them. <laughs> Thank you for the diary. I'm, um... <laughs> I think I might be might be spoiled by the usual Ren Pai kind of uh, features. Okay, shout out to Flurp though. <laughs> Okay, so, Cass Cass, um, starting from, from the point that I did, is still good, but, um, I just need to not accidentally die twice. Yeah? <laughs> or even once, for that matter. Okay, continuing. Okay, so it was this decision that, that um, that, uh, made me die. <laughs> yes? Instead of asking silly questions, help me find my fireflies. Uh... We didn't die. Wow, we. So we had one in the pill bottles. We had one in the laptop. We had Or the others. There was one behind these papers, yes? There was not. That was three total? 
And I did get the one from the pills. Oh, there's one in the book as well. That was, that was one. Anyway, I will, <laughs> I will wait on the, on, on the dragon's blessing to, um, <laughs> to continue on. If, if we are good from this point. Including the one that you can't miss? Yes. There was the one at the beginning of the scene. There was pills. There was... Not you. There was laptop. Do not include that one. Okay. One more then. Okay. I'm just gonna have my thoughts with something that worries me. It wasn't supposed to be happening anyway. Who's the blah, 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 blah. say here yeah what are you gonna do uh yep going to sleep We got oh, my sleeping bag is very cold. Same, same, same. I believe that was all the same. This is not, though. <laughs> okay. I wake up and almost immediately lose consciousness from horror. A thin metal stairway snakes around a giant column disappearing into the darkness. I press myself into the cold wall and pray that I freeze into it. This feeling. I spent a couple of hours or days here, but I don't know how high the column is. I don't know whether I'm going up or down. A million pounds of concrete and a million miles of emptiness. It's impossible to stay sane when you're nearing cosmic numbers like that. Looking at them, touching them, even thinking of them makes me feel an unimaginable horror. It's just a matter of time before my short term here will end. My mind will melt, my body will turn to dust. The wall's coarse surface scratches my face. Steps under my feet hum from the wind eager to escape the concrete's clutches and dive into the abyss along with me. But I'll stay here. Stay here without going anywhere. Won't even open my mouth. My every world word will be swallowed up by the abyss. I won't take a single step. Why would I? 
to find out where the stairway abruptly ends. It's all meaningless. Many units of time pass, but I'm still unmoving. My whole body is trembling, but then I realize it's the whole space around me that's trembling. It can't wait to destroy me. Maybe I should gather my will and at least turn my head? The thought doesn't stay in my head for long. It's torn out with inhuman force. Unaware of what's about to happen, I slowly turn my whole body with a squeak. No, this is not what I wanted. Don't! Amongst the silence sings a lonely colossus unmoving. Until the music stops, the bridge across the dark abyss cannot be seen. Oppressive, thick, sticky air drives itself into my ears, silencing my thoughts with a haphazard string of words while I watch the scene before me unfold. Hundreds of giant concrete structures just like mine spread in tidy rolls and rows endlessly in all directions. Stairways wrap around them like vines. There, at the end of this world, there's a person smiling. This world still exists, but all that makes it both exists and not. I try to erect a mind block, but to no avail. My brain is already at the mercy of the super creature. A moment passes and I realize that my body doesn't belong to me either anymore. My legs start moving up and up and start moving on their own. The only thing I can do is choose the direction. Up, down, or... The crowd notices blood on Wazik's hands. He runs away and then appears. He has nothing human about him apart from his excessive grace and hidden elegance. He walks out to the center of the stage. First act begins. Foreign thoughts become even more incoherent. There's less and less space for my own. Do you feel the connection to your body clearly, or does it still cause confusion and fear? You've been living through that fear a lot recently. How did it manifest exactly? Answer so honestly. Don't hide anything. I decided to descend, descend. You can have a sneaking suspicion that something is wrong because your path has changed. Maybe you started talking in a wrong way, or made some sort of mistake. If so, start getting used to your new life. Try creating imagery that would instill a feeling that everything is as it should be, and with time it will create a new order inside you. I don't doubt that you're going through some hard times, but you have to make sacrifices. Grow up. Only then you'll be able to obtain the meaning of life. You get it? Try it. Try that if you find it important. Every passing day is a precious gift. If you share a piece of that gift with the world even once, it'll seem like a speck of dust. Do you get it? No. I'm sorry. I won't get that then. Do you get it? Do you get it? Do you get it? Yes, even you get it. When you notice how people look at themselves in the mirror, when you look at your own reflection and realize that it exists in reality, do you understand how exactly it exists? I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stop being a nugget. <laughs> so, that one was a little bit harder to parse. <laughs> um, 
I mean, there were some parts of the dialogue that sounded like... That almost sounded like therapist talk, but that was profoundly wrong. So... Uh... This is a game that's gonna need to percolate, huh? Also, Mozik part is in reference to an Austrian opera of the same name. I... I don't know if this comes as a surprise to anyone, but um... I admit that I'm not I'm not a huge opera buff. <laughs> so I might need to be might need to be taught teached. Um Cass, would there be any other endings? I guess I can also like check my achievements and stuff. Um, milk. There's still apparently four more achievements to get. Fifteen short scenes. Bear recounts the degradation and demise of Wazik, a destitute soldier abused by his captain, experimented on by a doctor, and lacked the suspicion that his partner Marie is unfaithful to drum major. Cool. Uh. Charming. Very charming. Make sure one of them is the laptop. Do the second. Don't do the first. Do the laptop. Should I ask for Yeah, I guess I guess I need to ask for the for the code word. So we'll give it a try. Genuinely forgetting where the other ones were. Oops. Other than the book, but... And... Dunzo. I'm assuming that all this dialogue is going to be the same. Good word.
I appreciate the, the animation work that went into this one. Um, I will uh, wait for confirmation that there that there is need for it before making you pin anything. I appreciate the offer because my brain is apparently foop. Betty by time. Wake up lying on the cold floor in the center of a cramped room. I look around without standing up. There's no furniture, just naked walls and a single door. I hear muffled sounds coming from the other side of it. Scary sounds. I hug my knees and wrap myself in my sweater like it's a blanket. It's no use. I'm chilled to the bone. The room's pretty spacious, but I still can't shake the feeling that I'm trapped inside a suffocating casket. The faint blue glow that sneaks in through the keyhole only adds to that feeling. Do I want to know what's outside? This fun cue and inhuman roar comes from the other side of the door. It comes louder and louder, more and more distinct with every passing second. Somebody or something is getting closer. I curl into a ball trying to take up as little space as possible. Maybe I can become invisible, or become smaller in some miraculous way. In the meantime, the howl becomes unbearably loud, only for a moment. And it sheepishly backs off until I can't hear it anymore. I finally decide to stand up. After I do that, I hear another strange sound. It's coming from right above me now. The ceiling moves upward, squeaking. Small debris is falling on my head. I squint a little, then raise my hand trying to touch the ceiling, but it suddenly starts to rise quicker and instantly disappears into the darkness. I'm not in a casket anymore. Well, it wasn't exactly a casket now. It was a well in the form of a casket. The room becomes darker and colder. We'll have to do something about that at some point. Hours pass. I frantically run from one wall to another, delirious. The walls run away from me, making the already spacious room even bigger. In the end, I stand amidst an endless darkness, and only the door is watching me with its eye. I kept purposely avoiding it. I could sometimes hear horrifying rustles and howls from the outside. However, now I don't even have a choice anymore. I slowly come up to the door and reach out toward it. As expected, the door also moves away from me. I continue moving forward with my hands stretched out. I don't want to lose the only source of light in this pitch black darkness. At some point I get tired of sneaking up on the door like it's some wild animal, so I lunge at it, trying to grab the handle. However, at the last moment, the door whizzes away and I fall to the cold floor, unable to keep my balance. It hurts. Stupid door. Stupid, nasty, cursed door. I hate you. I hate you. I scream at the top of my lungs. I finally let out all the despair that I'd bottled up. I slowly realize how horrible the situation I ended up in is. No, 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 no. I don't stop screaming for a moment, because I'm scared to end up in complete silence. The reality around me disappears, my twisted imagination will take over, and the realest thing I have right now is my voice. 
Hey, I can hear you. Oh. Different voice. A voice coming from the other side of the door. I'm here. Come closer. I scream thrice as hard as before. I scream until my throat hurts, until my ears start buzzing. My biggest wish right now is to keep in touch with that person, whoever they are. Hey, where are you? I rush toward the door, stumbling on the way. I keep running for a minute, for ten minutes, but the door isn't even an inch closer. At the same time, the distance between us hasn't grown either. Which means I match it in speed. I just need to make one final push. I gather the last bit of strength I have and push my legs off the ground. The jump feels like an eternity. I stretch out my hand, almost touching the scratchy wood. I dive face first on the ground with ridiculous speed. Side at least 30 more feet like that, thanks to inertia, leaving behind a bloody trail. My hand is still outstretched, trying to grab empty space. <laughs> Tears stream down my face, making the numerous scratches burn. I try to wipe them, but I scream and yank my hand away the moment I touch my face. My lips and nose are a mushy mess. S somebody help! The other side of the door is completely silent. Silence reigns for an excruciatingly long time. However, at some point, that silent torture ends. Hey, I can see you. I try to reply, but stifled whimpers come out of my throat instead of words. Are you hurt? Yes! Yes! I stand up from my knees despite continuing to cry. I take a couple of deep breaths and start running again. I keep running for hours. I feel like the door is closer to me by an inch or two now. I must let myself stop to rest at that thought. I can't rest. I catch up to it sooner or later. The voice from the other side of the door keeps asking me how I feel. I let out heavy, ragged breaths and reply. I'll fall from exhaustion if I utter even a single word. Still, I'm thankful to them. I don't want to be want them to come silent. After another hour passes, I barely scratch the handle with my nails. I'm almost there. I'm so scared. Why aren't you doing anything? I... Uh, why are they doing this to me? Don't they understand how painful this is for me? Almost... There! You're scaring me! Go away! Rage fills my brain. I ignore the pain in my bones and channel all my strength into one final jump. No! Go away! I firmly grasp the handle and open the door. Blinding light hits my eyes. I lose the ground beneath my feet and start falling. I'm lying face down in grass. I smell water, earth, and the dampness of the night. And grass, of course. The wind tickles the back of my head. It howls and jumps around restlessly. Lying down like this is unpleasant and rude when nature is so alive around me as sounds, and I'm pretty sure colors too. I stand up full of anticipation. I see an endless field. A clear sky without a single star and a pale moon somewhere very, very far away. I shake my head and try to focus my eyes on anything but to no avail. My surroundings are just too vast. I feel dizzy. Bam! I'm lying in the thick wet gla glass grass again. But this time I'm looking at the darkness instead of a night the darkness of a night sky instead of just darkness. Is there any real difference, though? The wind howls. It's clearly upset, but what can I do about it? I hear an indiscernible echo coming from far away. A wolf for someone else. Does it even matter? I'm in the grass. Nobody can see me. Oh, oh or was it? Oh. Oh. Text. <laughs> the echo draws closer and closer. At some point I realize it's not a wolf. I jump up and start turning my head in a panic. Where's that sound coming from? I haven't said that out loud, but I got an instant reply. 
Oh. Hey, I can hear you. My voice runs across the field, mixing with the rustle of the grass and the howls of the wind. It feels like it's about to get absorbed by them, but... Oh. Hey, where are you? Oh. I can't understand where I should run to, and if I should run at all. Some, somebody clearly wants me to find and help them. Maybe they're hurt. Grass tickles my heels while I drag my feet in the direction where I think the sound is coming from. It's just, there's not a single tree or stone around. It's only an endlessly wide field. I hear a resounding, painful scream. I shut my eyes and cover my ears. I suddenly feel scared. The screams turn into a cry. I carefully raise my head, scared to death. Somewhere very far away, among the thick grass, I spot a silhouette. Just a small black spot, but... Hey, I can see you! The silhouette doesn't move, but the sound is definitely coming from its direction. No, it's not a scream. It's more like a whisper or a wheeze. <gasps> Are you hurt? No reaction again, just muffled sounds. Maybe it's the wind going mad, and the black spot is just a stone or a tree. I walk away, disappointed. One hundred steps. Two hundred steps. Then I turn around. Surprisingly, the spot hasn't become smaller. I start jogging. The grass is no longer tickling me. It's whipping my ankles, leaving cuts. Feelings of panic and unexplainable dread grow inside me. A stone? A tree? Why is the hell is this field endless? I don't turn around anymore. I know that it's chasing me. Sounds reaching my ears become even stranger, louder, and more distinct. The wind is blowing me too, huh? Isn't that right? That's the case, right? Finally, I stop. I ran out of breath. At the brink of dying. At least I think so. <gasps> Horrifying voice is coming right from behind me. I turn on instinctively and for some reason try to shield my face but end up losing balance falling to the ground. Replies with a nasty, nasty cackling rustle. Oh, I've had enough. I spring up. So what is still there, at the same distance as before? It's standing there without moving an inch. I'm scared here, you know. Why don't you do something? So I trembles, then starts slowly gliding toward me, followed by new sounds, wheezes, moans. Fear shackles me. I can only stand and watch the approaching black spot. My lips are parched. I speak in a voice that I don't recognize. You're scaring me. Go away. After that, the spot expands rapidly, and in the blink of an eye, most of the sky in the field is consumed by the sticky, cold darkness. The process finally lets my body go, and I immediately sprint away. I run so fast the grass turns to a dark green mush under my feet. I slip up, run, fall, run again. No, 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 no. No, go away! An unknown force turns my head with a crunching sound and the darkness consumes everything. I wake up on the cold floor in the center of a cramped room. Look around without standing up. There's no furniture, just the naked walls. Well. Well, 
Okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you for the quench. I will give my thoughts on that in just a second. So, uh... I think that one was a little longer than some of the others, but, um... I definitely got some of the feelings of trying but failing to make connections with other people. People who want to help but don't know how to handle your own eccentricities or mental illnesses or issues um, and end up retreating. Um, on the flip side, I, I saw in the second part um, aspects of not being able to understand other people. Um, so, uh, also, yeah, perseveration is defi has definitely been, been a theme throughout both of the games. But, um, dear lord, I, um, there are still a couple of achievements that I have yet to unlock, but I think I might be spent for the night. <laughs> um... So, uh, I think I'm probably going to call this here. Next next week we will be we will we will be on to something that is maybe maybe a little bit more lighthearted. I hope. Um, if people are interested, I might you know I might see what the the other achievements are and stream it on Discord. But otherwise, I oof, I definitely need a break. <laughs> um. You know, we might be frank. Um, but, um, let's see, let's see. We should probably raid someone. Well, shoot. <laughs> I see two people that I very much want to raid. So. Um, pretty bad if you end up doing it. Um, yeah, I mean, if there, I mean, there, there seems to be interest. So, yeah, maybe I'll throw it in Discord. Um, but, um, yeah, <laughs> I get the feeling that it wouldn't make for a great stream to just have another Thursday of just skipping through text. Uh, <laughs> but yes, Sunny is still going, and he was one of the ones that... I was looking at. I am, I am going to give a small shout out to dear Lord Lump. Can you not? Can you not? At Eleven p.m. Anyway, um, but yes, uh, I am going to give a quick shout out to the the other one that I saw streaming. Let's see, it should be... Yeah! So, um, Straw Bunny is not someone that I know personally, but uh, they are a game dev, and um, we have mutual friends in Arcade and Mime, so I, I've been meaning to check them out. Um, I want to check out their games sometimes, sometime. And it looks like they are actually uh, collaborating with Arcade, like, now. Um, so, you know, if you want some some more, you know, indie indie devs um, to, to check out, there you go. Speaking of, let me do one more. Boop, boop, boop. One more um, 
uh, one more shout out to the um, the the dev of the the milk du duology. Um, one more time, you can get this on Steam. You can you can get uh, both games on Steam, or you can get them in a bundle on um, Switch. That's what it's called. Um, and he also does uh, the the dev uh, also does like art and music and um, duology. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> uh, braining is hard. Um. But um. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. If you're into the vibes, check him out. Um, keep an eye on what 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 else he has coming down the line. I don't know if he has anything else coming down the line, but it is cool. Um, anyway, that being said, I am properly going to send us over to Sunny. We started actually about the same time I did, so um, I'm going to hope that. Let's see, it would help if I copied his name. But, um, Sunny, Sunny is a good friend. Um, if, if you saw me, uh, collabing with, um, with Boss yesterday, uh, Sunny is a very, very close friend of theirs. Um, so, um, he has not streamed for a while, but, um, he's currently doing, uh, some, some little, some little, like, uh, I don't want to use the wrong words. He is, he is making modifications to clothing because he just graduated. Not in the VTuber way, uh, but like in the actual school way. Um, so, so yeah, very, very excited for him. Definitely give him some congratulations. Um, Frank has put some, some raid messages there in chat if you are interested. Um, but yes, Sunny, Sunny is a good egg and uh highly recommend um i hope he's been doing well understandably he's been a little bit busy so i haven't chatted too much right that being said i'm going to take one more quick sip of water uh and do the outro type things <clears throat> so Thank you to everybody who came by. Uh, thank you to everybody who helped um, guide me through the games, who um, enjoyed the story, who quote unquote enjoyed the story, everyone who lurked, everyone who needed to peace out because it was too much. Totally understand. Very, very much appreciate everybody who, who has stopped by. Um, really, to everyone who has chosen to gaze long into the abyss, know that the abyss case is back and we will see you again very soon with uh with a few more more new games so take care